three. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable, this week's roundtable, we've got the guy who's been missing. He's been MIA, but he's back. Bearland Aaron Williams. Bearland, how are you? Man, so glad to be back. So glad. You, you've been missed. You have been missed. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. How are you, Eric? I'm good. Good to see you, man. We've got the nightcap OG dude buddy, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I'm great, Mark. Thanks. Glad Good to be to here. You. Good to see you. We got the Zen master. Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? As I used to say in my karate class, great and getting better, sir. Great and getting, and getting better. better, sir. <laughs> I, I have to tell you, I, I, I could get used to this sir thing. It's very southern. <laughs> Eric Peterson, you hear a lot of sir and ma'am in Tennessee? We do hear more of that here than you hear elsewhere in the country. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of get that kind of judgmental vibe sometimes with Eric when we're out to eat at boot camp and, you know, he'll say, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. And none of us know what he's doing. And oh, this feels very old fashioned. And at some point, I think he's going to order grits, but he doesn't. It's an interesting vibe. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> Uh, we've got the most feared woman in the country, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing great. Aaron, it's great to have you back. I love that there's so many of us on the call today. And in Eric's defense, he has a very modern hairdo. He has a very modern haircut with the fade and the spiky on top. Well, look, if the terrorist hunter has your back, Eric, we're not going to even talk about that, that hair. And then last but not least, we've got the Big Papa. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Good. I didn't, I mean, Eric, what are you getting a haircut for? Boot camp's not for another month. <laughs> I know. Man. I'll have another one before boot camp. I'll make sure. Getting, you're getting me and Mike all like antsy. Like, I didn't get a haircut. I wish I had a fresh fade going on. Looking all you, thought, here. you thought boot camp was about to start next week. Yeah, huh? I was like, oh, geez, am I not? Uh, I, I must have missed that. No, you look handsome as ever. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, this podcast is not sponsored by Eric's Good Looking Hair. It's sponsored by Flight School. And Flight School Live, learn more. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Get on the call with the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman, or the Zen Master, Mike Zeno, and they will give you the scoop. All right. We've got an interesting topic. Aaron Williams, what is the topic for the roundtable this week? Well, I received a question from one of our community members, and it goes like this. How does one go about test marketing before they own a property? Um, this person has been sending out offers and practicing their due diligence, um, and they want to start learning the marketing side of the business, though I, I'm guessing they don't have properties yet. So uh, they want to test market in some areas, and are curious about how to go to go about that without having specific things to advertise. Right. So, so essentially you, you're picking this County, but you're not sure about this County. So you want to put out what we call blind ads stating a theoretical property that you don't own in that County to gauge demand for those types of properties, which would then give you a little bit more confidence that, yeah, this is a County worth going to is that really the the question Fairland Aaron? um yeah i think so um because that would be that would be obviously a main reason to do some test marketing um and i guess you could even do some before you've gotten a property in a county you've decided on just to kind of uh see what the response is as far as um maybe the way you'd market it too so but it all kind of ends up the same so yeah, I agree with you. So even, even if you've picked your county, you could start doing this to gauge even how you're going to price. Yeah. And let's start building our list right away too, right? And start building your list right away because when they do respond, you can put them on your buyer's list so that when you do actually acquire a real property, you've got a hot buyer's list that you already definitively know want that property. So 
if I'm understanding then, is the question, do we do this? Or is the question, how do we do this? I'm not sure I understand exactly. I think the, I think we're looking at a how, like how do we go about doing this kind of thing? Okay, let's start with the Zen master. Mike Zeno, how do we go about this? Well, or how do I you think, go about this? I, I think um, you, you obviously put out some really perfect uh, initial answers to like what we do it and all that. But I kind of feel like this person might be going rogue, Mark, in a sense, not following our recipe. Like, re you know, like in flight school, recipe number one, go where the other land investors are. If you're not going there, you may start to doubt that the properties you're mailing to will sell. So you might, you might, you know, bring in that self doubt because you're, you know, we see people all the time that try to, you know, go away from the recipe that works, right? They go into an area where they, they want to buy the land, but maybe that's not an established market. So I guess since I go first, I get to say uh, that maybe they're misinterpreting what we do, Mark. Maybe I would advise them to make sure they're not going rogue, that they're following the recipe, which is go where the other land investors are, because then you can see established comps. You can see that properties are moving, you know, by the volume of people doing deals there. Um, looking at land moto for sold comps, for sale comps, comparing them. So I guess I'll start with that uh, as a starting point. I, I kind of get the vibe this guy is going a little rogue on, on, the, on the method that we typically teach. Yeah, I mean, we really do drill down very, very deeply in, in the training on how you pick a county, why you pick that county, and how to price the county. So I guess, Bearline Aaron, he, he wants to know, as far as the test marketing, I don't really, I, I, I guess, I don't, I don't know if he's, go, let's assume he's not going rogue, right? Yeah. Let's just assume he needs a land whoopee. I guess he wants, he wants more confidence and more security. That's like a land whoopee. Like, it. A land, like a whoopee, like you, you have like, like when you're a little kid, you get like a little blankie that we call it a whoopee and you feel more <laughs> secure and you know, you lose it, you start crying. Right. So this is like a land whoopee is you're oh. putting out these ads to make sure that you are really, really sure. And, you know, maybe you're the kind of person that, you know, really is super skeptical and like, yeah, you know, sure. Mark's been doing this 18 years, but maybe he doesn't know what he's doing. Right. Or, you know, maybe the, who knows, right. There's, there's skeptical people out there. They want to really see it for themselves. I don't know. Let's just call it the land will be method. So uh, Eric Peterson, what's your answer to that? Well, I interpreted the question um, as, as maybe more of a, a pre-marketing type question. So I'm going to assume that this um, person has maybe a property under contract. Maybe it's in due diligence. They're, they're kind of working through the acquisition process and they want to get out there and maybe market that property before they actually have it available for sale. So that I'm going to take that perspective. To me. That makes way more sense to me. Okay. It, that's it. Okay. Let's discuss that issue because that's a really good, a more, a way better topic than the first one, which would be, you're not following the recipe. Okay. This is great. Go ahead, Eric. Sorry. Okay. So, I mean, that may or may not be where the person is going, but, but nonetheless, I think that's how I'm going to answer it. And, um, you know, in that scenario, um, I would market almost as if you have the property. In other words, um, we'll call it a, a five acre parcel, you know, in whatever state. Um, I'm going to go to the same markets that I would market that property in um, when I actually buy it. So I'm going to say I have five acres available. It's in such and such a location. And, you know, this is the pricing. Maybe this is an opportunity for me to play around with the pricing. Maybe I don't know if I can get $99 a month or $150 a month or $20 down or $100 down. So maybe I'm going to use that opportunity to try different price points. Um, but what I'm not going to do is give an exact location. For example, it's on X street, you know, or here's a Google maps link to it or something like that. Instead, I'm going to be a little more vague. I'm going to talk about the type of property versus the exact property. And as those leads come in, um, you know, basically you have a couple choices. One is you can just not reply because you don't have anything available. Let's say this is your very first property. Um, that's an option. I don't know if I love it, but 
but it is an option. So you could take the email and, um, and then reach out to them once you have something available. Or um, you could reply to that person and try to start a conversation, get their phone number, get to understand what their problem is, what type of property they're really looking for, and if what you have coming in is going to be a good fit for them. Assuming it is, well then, you know, you can, you can take that a couple directions. If they're ready to go, you could co collect a deposit and, and nothing more until you actually take title for the property, then you can kind of finish and close the deal and you can just let the buyer know that's the situation it in. it's in, it's going through closing. When it's closed in a week's time or whatever that time frame is, you know, you'll finish off the transaction, but their deposit allows them to hold that property and, and basically have first dibs on it. So, you know, that's kind of some of the process you could take with it. I, yeah, I, I really like that um, for sure. I'd, I'd like to hear uh, Mimi Schmidt's thoughts on this as well. My number one thing when I want to go into a county is to put test ads out. It's so easy, it's so cheap, and it tells you so much about the market. How hard are you going to have to work to get a lead, right? Um, but then you're actually going to have people respond to those correctly. Craigslist ads. And I, I had a woman yell at me once when I actually was honest with her. Hey, I'm just kind of testing the market. So I literally, when people do call me on those Craigslist ads that, gen, that are general, just like Eric said, I'll say, I do sell land and I'm out of it in this area right now, which is true. It doesn't say that I, I don't say I had some originally, um, but I already have a scarce situation built in because I don't have any land. I don't tell them that, but I'll get a couple in, but even they sell out quickly, right? And so I'm de and developing my uh, buyers list, and I, I it already has this scarcity built into it because I'm just getting started and I only have a few pieces. So that has really worked in my benefit in the past, right? You can use it to your benefit that scarcity. Um, and I do use of all the places that I go out to check my pricing. It sounds like this person they've sent out 200 letters, but it didn't actually say they they bought any maybe they're not sure of their pricing the best way for me to check my pricing is land moto there's just that's where so many of us are already i'm not just saying that because it's god it's just where i go to check out pricing check your pricing on land moto be watching if you, your responses that you've got to check the pricing on the mailings that you're continuing to do um that's what i do and I'm, i've checked out three counties in the last three counties in the last six months so, and that it's worked for me going into new counties. So that's my advice. You're muted, Mark. There you go. Cool. Sorry. Fantastic. Uh, Scott Bossman, what's your take? Well, I think just to add on to what most everyone has said, um, I think it's all good advice. I think Mike's advice is good in the sense that you do not want to overanalyze because you can go down rabbit holes in this business and you do want to keep things simple. Uh, keep things simple, follow the recipe, go where other land investors are. Um, but it's, but it's very str strategic to set blind ads when you're going into maybe a new area or when you're, you know, looking to sell to maybe a different group of people, you know, uh, how many more hits are you going to get on Craigslist when you talk about the hunting in the area? Um, you know, uh, how many more hits are you going to get on Craigslist when you, when you start talking about tiny homes and you know that tiny homes are, are accepted in your area? So these are all ways to test the market to see what people want to add to your buyer's list um, and to, you know, um, basically just uh, feed your, your county research going forward in this business. Fantastic. Fantastic. And we'll give the big pop of the last word on this. Big Papa. You know, I think it's a great question. And uh, I know Scott goes into it quite heavily in flight school and I don't want to steal any of his thunder, but you know, he, he talks a lot about the demand, right? And it's a simple economic uh, concept, right? Supply and demand. Those are two things that we need to take into consideration when we're, when we're shopping for an area to buy land in and when it comes to selling land doesn't do you any good to buy land where there's not a lot of land to be purchased, right? And 
you don't want to end up buying land if there's no demand for it. So this is a foolproof way to get out there and determine, is this going to sell? And if it is going to sell, then you can go back and get more of it. So I think uh, pre-marketing an area, it's, I mean, it's absolutely essential to what we do. We do it on every new property. Well, not every new property. Every time we, we look at entering into a new marketplace, we want to get a feeler. We want to know, can I get 200 for a month for this? Could I get 250? And the only way we're going to know that is by marketing. Like Mimi said, it's easy. It's cheap. It's effective. And it's, a, you know, it's honestly a simple process. But you don't want to get carried away or get caught marketing a piece of property that you don't own because people are going to call you out. And the last thing you want to happen is have somebody question your reputation. Because if your reputation goes down the drain in this business, I mean, that's all we have, right? We're buying and selling land on the internet. So do things the right way, be a little bit vague, explain to them that, you know, you might have something coming and available in the next little bit or, or however you want to do it. But, uh, you know, I think this is a great question and it's a concept that, uh, if you're going to get serious in this business, you need to look into it. All right. Fantastic. Bearland, Aaron, how do you feel about all those answers? You know, I feel those answers are terrific. Um, it's really well covered. The only thing I might um, pull the group on is, uh, would you consider Craigslist the only place you really want to pre-market? Um, can you do it on Facebook or some land sites or anything like that? Mimi's shaking your head. Mimi? No, you know, I'm a huge fan of Facebook, but no, Facebook needs to be more specific to the property itself. And I will say the best information that I've gotten is those folks calling about those general ads. I'll say, hey, yeah, I sold my first few. Uh, but if you'll give me some information on what you're looking for, you know, I'll, I'll keep a note of it. And I get great information on what those people are answering my general ads, what they're actually looking for when I'm going to buy. All right, great, great. Well, I, th I think this was a, a really great topic, and I think we we really uh, covered every aspect of it. So that being said, great job, Roundtable. You know, let's how about a little self congratulations? <laughs> there you go, pat the, the little little pat on the back. So that leads us to Mark, our Mark, Mark. We got to. We got to thank the uh, the listener for sending in a question too, right? I mean, it's awesome when people are actually listening to our podcast and then submitting their questions or topics for discussion. I mean, I don't know who this guy is, but you know, thank you for that because we appreciate it. It's it's good for everybody, and it's it helps us know how we can you know better inform the community of the right way to do this. Yeah, that's a really good point, and I apologize for not you know, truly acknowledging the fact that a lot of the roundtable discussions are coming from our community's questions and, 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 you know, their pain points. And this way we can sort through the most relevant of those questions and attack them head on. So if you don't post that question to us or you don't put it in the Facebook group, uh, the Land Geek Motivation and Wealth Creation group, or you email, don't email support at thelandgeek.com. One of those things we don't know. And so, Tate, that's a really good point that we need you to continue asking, asking these questions, getting more clarification so that we can create better roundtable podcasts. So I, I appreciate you bringing that up. But that doesn't put, you know, give, give me and me a pass on the tip of the No, 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 definitely not. You know, like... <laughs> Like that's just like, no, it's, it's tradition. So Mimi Schmidt, what is your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? So earlier in the week, and I, I think it was on the official Land Geek Motivation Wealth Creation Group, you had posted a tip about Butler as a way to automate in Trello. And I wish Scott was here because he's always dogging my Trello and, and promoting his expensive pipe drive, right? So Butler is to Trello what Zapier is to pipe drive, except for pipe drive and Zapier cost money and Butler and Trello do not. 
So yes, Butler is free and does all the Zapier stuff. If I move a card from due diligence to closing in my intake section of Trello, I can have it email my uh, one of my VAs to get the marketing information ready. I can have it uh, move a new card in marketing to have my ad copywriter start to write the marketing information. So except for that, Butler is super easy to use. Um, it has, it's, it's amazing. It has just this pop-up where you enter basically what you want to do instead of struggling with Zapier or paying someone a hundred bucks a Zap. So um, highly recommend Butler. It's free. You know what I smell, Mimi? You smell that? No. <laughs> a, a new Mimi Schmidt course on using I'm telling you. Butler and Trello automated, providing all the automations for your CRM. And then you just go into LG Pass and use that in conjunction. Yeah. Boom. For, the, really I mean, for it, Pipe Drive is tw what, $29 a month per person. On Trello, I get a $10 discount for every time I add a person. So I'll have five per people on a board, right? I got my mailing board, my um, intake board, marketing, and sales. And uh, I add a VA and I get a discount. I don't have to pay for Trello literally for like five more years. <laughs> Well, let's give Scott Todd a chance to respond. Scott? Well, we really didn't hear anything from Scott. So, and he's not on mute. Say, not on mute. Not on mute. So, the, uh, I think he Eric, loves it, actually. I think, Eric, are you struggling? <laughs> I want to say something. Eric, Eric is a big pipe drive guy. <laughs> I'm a Pam. I don't like Trello. I'm like Scott. So, you know, I'm going to stick with my pipe drive and Zapier and I love it. Um, but there's nothing wrong with someone else using Trello and Butler if that's what they love. Right. It's just mine right. might be better. <laughs> Does it have all the same automation yeah. and features as Zapier? I, I'm having a hard time believing that. There's yeah. no way Zapier's got thousands of automation, you know, options there. So I don't know enough about Bob. Does like it's a, like it's a process work workflow process app, right? Well, so is Trello. It's just free, and Zapier automates it, but <laughs> it costs money too. Butler is free. I, I think that Trello is Mimi's whoopee. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the only thing that bothers me, Mimi, about free is yes. how are they going to stay in business? What's the business model? Well, if you have to upgrade if you get to a certain point, but I haven't found a need to upgrade yet. Oh, okay. So it's quote unquote free. But Butler is designed to work with Trello. It's not made to work with other apps as well. Everything. Right. And so that's where Zapier that's a major difference. Difference. Right. Yeah. Right. Because Zapier, Zapier, you can integrate it with Everything. Everything. Right. So finally, Mimi Schmidt, a lukewarm tip of the week. Fantastic. <laughs> but it could be a good, I mean, there's a lot of times when you people know. like are intimidated by Zapier, right? Because it is not the easiest thing sometimes to use. User friendly. This, yeah, this could be a good way to kind of cut your teeth on some of that automation. And then you graduate to the big boys league, right? Yeah. And you start using Zapier. Come on. And I man. think you're really going to, you're going to really learn. Yeah. And get all that down and create all those integrations and then be like, okay, no, no you can still that stay in the minor leagues, Mark, if that's what you want. I mean, but anyone who's listening to this podcast is not put together a class thinking small and being in the minor leagues. No. But then they should start with they, they right? this is like the same thing with your razor. Scott Todd, I use a five dollar bit and you use a hundred and sixty dollar razor. You guys yeah. can use your expensive pipe drive and zap Some of us like wasting money, I guess. I guess that's what it comes down to. I mean You like your hoity toity tools. I'm just gonna save money. Use my pipe drive. Yeah. I mean look, I, I get it. I get it. Like for sure. I mean you know you know what's so funny about this is that at boot camp, we know this is completely antithesis. To like the real Mimi Schmidt. Like we're at, you know, at, at dinner and she's ordering like a fine wine. She knows like the <laughs> Okay. She's not, she's not like where it you, got, you got five dollar Chuck. <laughs> Good enough. 
<laughs> you got me there. You got me there. I can't, there go. I can't defend that. No, but I think it's a, I think it's a cool tool, actually. I mean, I, I'm reading about it right now, and it's... It's more user-friendly than Zapier, I'll say. It seems pretty, pretty simple. And I know a lot of coaching clients love Trello, and That's by all means, this is a cool tool if you're using that. They all do this. Is this, is this a preference issue, like Pro Jam over Nirvana? Or vice versa? That's not a preference. That's just good, I think good so. taste right there. And I, I've tried other free tools. Like oh, but, you, you okay. used HubSpot free, but it was very limited in its capacity, right? It was a beginner thing and I, it only lasted so long. It only had five free templates. So, I mean, come on, how long can you go with that? But this one I've been using for free for two years now and, and the functionality just keeps getting better. All right. I, I, really, I, think, we should, I think we should upgrade this tip from lukewarm to like, Fantastic. I'm, I'm now seeing the light on this. Lainey, you know, I think we all, we all need these, those kind of tips or those kind of tools too, because it's not really any different than if you're choosing, like, especially if somebody's starting off, um, you know, MailChimp compared to ConvertKit or one of the paid systems or Google Voice compared to um, Ring Central. You know, Ring Central. Yeah. You know, it gives you a really powerful solution to get pretty far in the business before you need to, if you choose to, go to a hoity-toity paid tool. Now, I will say, on my sales like side, I have a hoity-toity tool that's more expensive than Pipedrive. It's like $70 a month, not 29 right, on my sales side. But for my intake side, this works great. And Mark, how can you say it's lukewarm? It was your tip. <laughs> <laughs> wow moving on uh, i want to thank the listeners and if you're getting value and you're enjoying the podcast the, you know do us a favor share it with a friend put it up on the interwebs certainly share it you know in the social medias but then subscribe rate and review the podcast we you know send us a screenshot of that review to support at the we're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. And if you email support with, I want the Trello Butler, um, Mimi Schmidt or Terrace Hunter system with integrations, we will literally bully Mimi into making that course until she says, I can't deal with you geeky guys anymore and I'll just do it and it's done. And we'll all be appreciative. So we have a title for this podcast. It's called The Land Whoopie versus The Trello Whoopie. And uh, I thought it was great. So I want to thank everybody. You guys ready? One, two, three. Let 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 go. Go. Pretty good. I, 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 I love that Zeno's like just enamored with the word whoopie. I've heard Binky before. I haven't heard Whoopi. Binky? I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure Whoopi's from the Michael Keaton movie. Mr. I agree. This, this is oh, an 80s term. Great movie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that explains the, a lot. The little boy's like, okay, you ready to give up your Whoopi? <laughs> it's, it's a real term in, in there is a, culture. There is a site for Whoopi addicts online I just found. So. <laughs> Whoopi addicts. Are you are you getting a gateway that says must be eighteen or over? Uh, no, no, not at all. Okay, good. Are you, are you confusing that with a Wookie? No. Have you ever met people who they have a Binky or a Wookie and they keep those are furries years and years and years and years and years into adulthood? Like, yes, I have met people who still sleep with their Binky. Yeah, my, Scott, that, it's called an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's what they've tapped into. The iPhone has tapped into the Whoopi. It is. They, they're like, yeah, it's, it's Whoopi culture. It's pretty good. All right. So I, I got to run and uh, I'll just tell you guys a quick story. About two weeks ago, our dishwasher broke. And so we bought a new dishwasher and they're like, you know, we can't get out there to install it because I clearly don't know how to do anything. And um, for like, you know, 10, 10 days. So for 10 days, my wife put like scotch tape on all the drawers 
saying no. Like, don't open the drawers. Don't use any silverware or any plates. The dishwasher's broken. And we've been using paper and plastic silverware for 10 days. And I can't wait to use real plates and real silverware again. Like, the amount of gratitude and appreciation. I love when things break. Because, like, you get used to things. So, like, I'm going to have, like... Yeah, do you know I have a sink and dish soap and like a rag? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I, we put on the gloves. It's very uh, emasculating. I put on these gloves, put on scalding hot water, and I do it, <laughs> right? But come on. I don't want to be doing it. I mean, we got like, three kids. It's a lot of dishes. I mean, I'll do it when I have to do, but I don't want to spend an hour scrubbing dishes because, you know, you guys know how I feel about my time. Well, you gave the answer yeah, right there. The Three like, kids. There. Oh, come on, man! They're back to school. We got homework to do. I don't want to scrub the dishes. Yeah, uh, he's probably off to college now. Yeah, I got. Come on, those. The, I agree in manual labor, but not when they're in high school. I mean, I do like on the weekends, but not like like. Come on. Yeah. They, they got to study. We're putting that as a priority. There is uh, Zen in the art of dishwashing. You know, you can get into the into it and use it as a way to. We get peaceful so you could actually gain from washing dishes manually well you can do that with anything <laughs> true <laughs> so <laughs> recycle maintenance so i mean let me ask you do you, do you guys not have dishwashers i'm, I'm feeling no, I'm but feeling, I, I installed mine myself of course oh, you did. nice because you're, you're, you're a real man scott bossman i can't install <laughs> mine uh, no i did reprogram my garage door recently huh yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Awesome. Andy man. Nice. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> That's about it though. <laughs> Unless it's got two wheels and you have to pedal it, I'm pretty much useless. All right. All right. Well, Mimi, you got a high schooler. Mike, you got a high schooler. Scott, you got a high schooler. Are you making those kids do a lot of chores after dinner and then their homework? Scott's a yes. Mimi's a no. Mike. Oh, Aaron, just, airline Aaron, he's got the teenage. Yeah, you're a yes. All right, fine. Um, I'm going to reevaluate. I'm going to reevaluate. Hammer's coming down in the Podolsky household. He's going to be like, no more podcast for dad. <laughs> That's right. He's getting all these bad ideas. <laughs> like, Who's this Scott Bossman to Bearland Aaron? Why are you listening to them? Bad influences. That's right. I'll tell you what, that's that Midwest work ethic. We don't have that out here. I grew up with that. You know, it's snow. It's like every, it's nice every day. It's different. Here it's all about the college. Builds, builds character being around here. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I'm on Team Mimi. That's right. It's all about, you know, making education the priority. And out here, it's it's really difficult because our our school system's like one level above Alabama. <laughs> True. Look at look up the, the Alabama boot camp. What is what is Arizona, Mark? What is Mark, Arizona? Like forty nine. No oh, way. 44. I think Alabama or Mississippi is like fifty in the country. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Vegas is. We're like forty four or something. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You'll be super stoked, Tate, when she's literate, like my kids. It's a huge win. <laughs> She's she's gonna be just a star in school. <laughs> Let's see education star. ranking by state. South Dakota's way at the bottom too. And that's where I grew up. Uh, and look at you, your success. Yeah. Those rankings yeah. don't matter. They don't matter. It's, it's all because it's all about parenting, Scott Bossman. That's right. Yeah, of We're course. Indiana, in Tate. Zeno is going to be number one. I mean, his kids are destined for greatness. Mass is yeah. one? Yeah, yeah, but you know what, Tate? Most, most unfriendly city in the country. Why? Bunch of intellectual snobs. Mm. But, yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah, and sports so, snobs. Go ahead and say Sports snobs. Big sports guy. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Do you at a Harvard or MIT? Oh. <laughs> Boston College, yeah. Boston oh. College, yeah. Emerson. No, I was better than you. Nice to meet you. It's worse than I thought. Club now. Yeah, the accent. Uh. Yeah. 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 That's right. 
You went, that's right. You went to Boston College. Go park my car. Okay. <laughs> no? Oh, Eric Peterson's afraid to say anything. So nice. All right. Thanks, everybody. I, I, I gotta, by the way, the whole point of this is I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> See you guys. See you later. See you.